Still 40 degrees. Oh look, Boy George is here. Boy George is here. <laughs> That's one of our little cats. He won't get much bigger than that, but he's a good boy. He just kind of floats around the barn. So today what I'm going to do real quick is address a situation that I have up here. This is the water room where we have our 3,000 gallon above ground storage facility for our rainwater catchment system that we gravity feed to our log cabin. <laughs> In case you're new to our channel. And I was battling putting the hose on and off. Uh, people saw me up here with my crescent wrench and sometimes the easy answers are the most elusive. Um, but somebody mentioned in the comment section about getting a quick disconnect and I'm like, duh. <laughs> so I grabbed a brass uh, quick disconnect on here. Um, so I'm just going to put that on there. And you guys, it's uh, 20 something degrees outside. Uh, the water's flowing. This is the first flush. I use this for water on the horses and stuff. But no problems with the tanks freezing. I have got the hose in here. So this spray foam insulation, if you guys didn't see that video, you should check it out. But it is working phenomenal. Probably one of the, some of the best money that I spent in 2018 on the homestead. So I'll put this uh, quick coupler on here. And then also remember guys, if your uh, husband's out there, you wanna make sure that any systems that you have in place are wife friendly. So if you're not around, something goes down, they'll be able to help you out on the homestead and they'll know how to manage it. This system will be a lot more manageable for Stacy. All she has to do is push this back and it pops right out. Because we do like to uh, disconnect it when not in use. So it's pretty simple. You just screw on the end and then it just has a little spring cap on here. And then instead of using the wrench every time to take it on and off, it just pops on and off. Boom. 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 Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. And here's an update on the 20 cord. <laughs> the 20 cord wood goal. <laughs> I have been uh, put on hold. <laughs> uh, I think Eric at Life and Farmland has some connections. Uh, because my operation is totally shut down now I don't know if you can see it but see that tree that's the next big tree we're gonna take down and that's gonna be a lot of fun so stay tuned for that video but for right now I'm just taking care of the animals making sure they're fed and watered I'm gonna go check on the bees right now and give you guys a couple of tips about the bees and showed you what the stack looks like now i was smart enough because we are running kind of low on wood i mean i told you guys i had a problem with making sure i had my wood put up and that this year i was going to break the spell but uh i do uh <laughs> i do have some wood issues so i did tarp this up really good um, because everything that i have in there is deadfall and and could be ready to go some of it might be wet just because it was outside uh, before i stacked it but we've had some good winds before all this came and I covered it up. So I'm plucking wood out of here already using it on the homestead. But there is no cutting down trees for a minute. And they're saying, rumor has it, that it's going to be down to negative three, four this weekend. And maybe another six to nine inches of snow. Isn't that right, Maggie? We got no, no cutting wood, and we got the water fixed for Stacy. There's your pillow. Get that pillow. Good girl. So one of the questions you guys are asking a lot too is what about, this is just the best snow. <laughs> what about, this is great for making snow castles. What about the bees and what do you do with them in winter time and is there anything special that you need to do? 
we're a very holistic approach type of place so we don't really do anything extra to our our livestock our bees you know besides apple cider vinegar you know just stuff like that but we don't uh, baby them or, or give them too much because that, we feel that that makes them weak so you can do whatever you want on your homestead this is just our philosophy here and it's worked out great we have healthy livestock we don't intervene a lot um, we don't use chemicals from big pharma or anything like that and like I said it's working out great so with our bees in the winter time we really do nothing did you know that bees actually create winter bees that's right, she'll actually lay the eggs and those bees that are hatched closer to winter time will actually come out um, with more body fat and more fuzz on them and able to withstand the temperatures much better than your summer bee. So just in case you didn't know, there's a nugget for you. Also, bees are very cold tolerant. They can handle some really cold stuff. And that's because when they get inside the hive, they get together in a nucleus. They stay really close together. That's why in the wintertime, it's not advised that you walk up to your hive and knock on it or bump it to see if you can hear the bees inside. Because that could separate them and disorient them. And then they won't be able to cluster back together, causing them uh, to slowly die. So after the snow, this is a great time to come out and take a look at your beehives so you can kind of see what's going on with them. Okay, now one of the reasons why I like it is because you can come out and you can see what's going on. So you can look for footprints, like mice are a problem for bees, especially in the winter time, because they like to get in through the front here and then they like to eat their way around inside of there. Um, we've actually opened up beehives before uh, where there was a mouse actually trapped inside. So that's one thing to consider. You can see all the tracks around the beehive right now. Another thing I want you to notice is notice you know, the snow's drifted, it's pressed up against the beehive everywhere, and that's fine. But notice right, right up against the beehive on that lip there, there's no snow because they generate that much heat inside of the beehive. But we're actually going to clean this off for them a little bit just to make sure that they have the proper ventilation. So it'll look something like that. Another reason why you come out at the snow is you can actually see that the bees have already been cleaning. They're already bringing out the dead bees and they're bringing them out and dropping them off outside all around the beehive. All these little holes right here, those are bees inside of there. So they're actually already pushing them out and cleaning up the hive. You can see a couple right there. I'm gonna go over one more thing with you guys. You can see the first one that we did has a solid bottom. And you can see this one here has a screen bottom, okay? So the air for this hive circulates underneath, comes up through the screen and goes up. So we wanna clear this out so that airflow continues. In case you didn't know, bees are super smart and they always are protecting their environment. They're super clean and they're super smart. What they'll actually do is inside of the uh, hive, they'll put um, propolis, it's called, and they'll put it all around in areas that they, uh, hold on. Just warm enough for somebody to come out. He needs to get back in there, doesn't he? Come on, little buddy. It's not warm enough for you to be out here. I know, I don't want you to get mad either. Got them back in safe and sound. They'll actually c control the airflow with it. So um, you don't want to mess that up. So also with those flat boards at the bottom, if you don't have a screen bottom, you want to slightly tilt those forward. So any water that gets in there by chance, uh, rain or maybe some of the snow melt will actually drain out of the front. Whereas the one with the screen, uh, you really don't have to worry about it. These uh, pieces of wood on top of the hives as we were having such bad winds. The lids were blowing off and I didn't really have any bricks handy. So I grabbed these six by sixes and put some on top so the lids would quit blowing off. That was a pain. So hopefully you guys got a couple tips about the bees and what's going on with them in the winter time. All the hives have activity. I can hear them a little bit. Plus I can just tell 
uh, with the amount of bees on the outside of the hive uh, that they've been cleaning and, and just kind of hanging out. So hopefully you guys got a couple of uh, informational tips on this video in case you were thinking about raising bees. Um, we're not the world's greatest bee experts and nor do we play one on social media. But we have been keeping bees for seven years fairly successfully. Hopefully. <laughs> and uh, we have a good time doing it and what's worked for us is all that we're sharing and hopefully you can implement that on your homestead as well so man we just uh, got all around today and checked it out everyone's nice and calm still there's lots of snow on the homestead more snow to come they say we'll see about that well there you guys go you got a quick little bee tip and we fixed the quick connect on the first flush up at the water tanks which is good for us because then Stacy has it a lot easier if she was to have to do that so you guys remember that don't, don't forget because when the wives say something they're gonna be like Doug said <laughs> we'll see you guys on the next video stay safe out there and uh, be kind to one another Oh yeah, inside the cabin now. But if you guys got any bee questions and you want to know anything about bees, I'll be glad to share anything that I know or answer some of your questions. Like the one question that we got on Facebook was about the bees and could they start off bees with just one hive? And that's perfectly fine. You can start off bees with one hive and if you can get them through the winter, the second year, you could actually split those bees into two hives so you won't be buying another set of bees to start you off. And then from there you can go from two to three to four to however many hives you want to collect. But bees aren't like really like sheep or cattle where you need another one to kind of keep it company. Um, just the more you have, the more opportunities you have for honey. Also, I wanted to tell you guys real quick, I'm glad you stayed till the end of the video, is that I don't take the honey off of my hives every single year. Some years, like this year, I left the honey on there. I took a little bit, but for the most part, I left the honey on there because I had this inclination. They were saying we were going to have kind of a long, drawn-out winter and everything. I just wanted to make sure they had enough of the reserves for them um, and I was only going to take the extras. Um, so I don't feed sugar water to our bees. Um, if you do, that's fine. It's just something that we don't do. And it's working out good for us. So if you got those questions, leave them down below. I didn't want to leave you hanging. But we'll see you guys on the next video.